detecting a massive object emerging from hyperspace. Right out the gate, this is way better than the Battlefront 2 campaign. I mean, I knew that everybody expected that since this is a solely single player game, but this just blows Battlefront 2's campaign out of the water. I mean, just for reference, and I know that everyone's playtime is going to be different, but it took me 21 hours and I kind of messed around a little bit. I toyed around with different planets traveling back and forth, but it took me 21 hours to finish the campaign compared to Battlefront 2's four to six hour campaign. So yeah, but honestly, I would greatly recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. Before we go any further though, I'd like to obviously issue out a spoiler warning. Everything from here on out will be spoiler filled, but if you just wanna get my rating, um, definitely buy it. It's definitely worth 60 bucks. It makes Battlefront 2 look bad. I myself am just a fan of single player games more so than multiplayer but this is definitely like a step above what I normally would play. So yeah, get it, buy it, love it. Spoilers from here on out. For starters, I think it's worth pointing out this is probably one of the more interesting stories we've had in a game in a long time. It feels very reminiscent of Knights of the Old Republic, that first game with the Rakatan Society. This is the Zephos, which is another ancient force-wielding society. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of resolution on the field of the Zephos. They don't even directly tie into the plot. They're more uh, a means to an end. Uh, you use their civilization's artifacts and ruins to find a key that opens up a gate to a holocron. I would be very interested in a DLC where maybe we can go find a lost tribe and maybe it could even be very similar to the Rakatans from Knights of the Old Republic. But for right now, it wasn't in the game, so we'll never know. But literally everything from Cass's reveal to his fight with Vader to the eventual destruction of the Holocron was honestly amazing. I can't believe, I'm really honestly surprised that this game came from EA. I know that it was mainly made by Respawn and EA just kind of like distributes it or whatever but i'm very surprised that ea let this go through without somehow screwing the game up in one way or another but the game's not perfect aside from the uh zephos there are a few plot points that i felt were not necessarily handled very well um specifically the arena um i had a really fun time playing that level and i was really hoping i'd be able to revisit that place but you see it once and it's gone. You get kidnapped and then you leave once you're finished and then that's it. Story-wise, I'd say those are the only gripes that I have with the game at all. I had a few technical gripes, um, one being just the lightsaber colors were very limited in the beginning of the game. You could only have um, blue, green, or orange, which I thought was an odd color choice. But as the game progresses, obviously, you go to Ilum, you build a new lightsaber. I picked yellow because yellow is cool. It's just, I just like yellow as a lightsaber color. It's not even my favorite color in general. I just think it looks awesome as a lightsaber. But yeah, circling back to story, I think that the flashback that shows Order 66 with Cass and his master is absolutely heartbreaking. You see the same music that's played in episode three is played in this scene. And it's just, it's, it's almost gut-wrenching. I'll be completely honest. I, I like kind of had to take a step back afterwards. It's honestly one of the best stories in a Star Wars game. Now to actual playing of the game, this game does have a skill tree, which I think is great. I've got most of it filled out and I think it's amazing. Unfortunately, there's only really three branches. It's not like a Skyrim skill tree where there's just an, a ton, several dozen different skills that you can level up throughout the game and you have to kind of pick and choose which ones you get. Like this one, you literally have enough time on the game where you could fill out the entire tree and it wouldn't burden you that much. So I suppose you could consider that a con to the game, but the fact that this has a skill tree and there's a customizable playing style available, it's like you did a good thing, just not as good as others, but you still did a good thing. So I like the fact that this game actually had a skill tree. That's a big plus for me. Combat's great. I love that you can flawlessly switch between single blade and double blade, and as the game progresses, you can then split them. Now, as for how the game feels and plays, it's definitely got the revisibility of planets that Knights of the Old Republic de does. It's got the skill tree and move unlock that Shadow of Mordor does. Also, the climbing is really nice. 
just makes it feel like I'm playing Shadow of Mordor but with a lightsaber. And also due to the fact that you're running around with a lightsaber, um, it feels very much like the Force Unleashed. Obviously a much newer and better looking Force Unleashed. Lots of Easter eggs in this. For starters, we obviously see a lot of the Clone Wars stuff is there. You see um, LAAT gunships, Venadors, Luker Holt cruisers. You see clone troopers. You can actually find their corpses if you look in the right spots of Kashyyyk. And obviously all the flashbacks take place at the very end of the Clone Wars, which again, just want to reiterate, absolutely heartbreaking um, moment of the game. Saw Guerrero's in this for a total of one mission, and then he literally leaves. Um, but he is voiced by Forrest Whitaker, which is a nice plus as always. Grand Inquisitor is dropped, Yadel is dropped. Like, I mean, there's a lot of name drops in this, and it's really nice. And obviously, Darth Vader shows up at the end. That was kind of a big moment. I was really happy to see that. He doesn't kill you, which was a little odd, I'll admit. I expected him to kill me at the end of the game, but he didn't. You escape and kind of leave him fighting off a giant tidal wave, which is interesting, but, you know, I, I didn't expect that to be where the game went. But it does operate the same way as uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where once you finish, the game takes you back right before you finish, before you, like, initiate that mission. So you can still keep going, and continuity-wise, you haven't done the big event yet, but it isn't replayable. That's kind of the one downside. But yeah, I would definitely say my favorite levels are Dathomir the first time, and then also the second time, the boss battle is amazing, but then Kashyyyk the second time are probably my three favorite levels. Definitely, 10 of 10, they're, they're all three of them are great. Uh, the boss battles are the uh, at the end are amazing, or the revelations at the end, the flashbacks. Two of them have boss battles, one of them has a flashback definitely recommend if i could replay them in story mode which i don't know i just finished and came out here after playing again 21 hours of the game i don't know i hope i can replay them in story mode because that would be a lot of fun i just don't want to have to rebuild my lightsaber after seeing the flashback again last thing that i'll say about this game which is fitting are the boss fights the boss fights are honestly awesome i literally love whenever I would like walk into a clearing and then an Inquisitor would just pop down. You fight the ninth sister once and then you fight the second sister, I wanna say like three times and you meet her in like a cutscene. But it's really interesting. You beat her every single time except for the first time, it's kinda of like a draw, but she's still an imposing threat. Well guys, that's it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I definitely recommend you download this game. It's super fun. It's one some of the most fun I've had playing a Star Wars game. Definitely recommend it. It's definitely worth the $60 price. Um, buy it on Steam. I, I know you can get it on PS4. You can get it on Xbox. I just got mine on Steam. You can get yours through EA Origin. It's available everywhere. That's another great thing that the developers did was they just made the game available everywhere at launch. So I've had a great time. Um, I really hope you guys do too. I really love this game, honestly. Definitely, I'd say it makes up for EA's blunder with uh, Battlefront 2, um, though most of the credit goes to Respawn. Hope all of you have a fun time playing. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you again next time. You don't know the power of 19.